Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a good day today and everyone is staying safe. Um, this is the cover of the book that uh, Lady Colin Campbell is writing and it's Marion Hagen, excuse me, Megan and Harry, the real story. Um, enough with the lies, tell us the truth. Full disclaimer can be found down below. All of my content was found on a public domain and I'm using these under the fair use, fair dealing guidelines. These are my opinions and are for entertainment purposes and may not be true. All right, let's go ahead and let's get started. And this is a, a full screenshot of um, of the book. I was thinking about um, how Megan is always whining in the uh, media and is uh, blaming Harry now for the reason for Megxit and all the things that uh, she's said to everybody about being uh, treated, uh, treated cruelly and, and um, uh, just things not going her way. So let's go ahead and let's think about all the support that they received from the royal family and especially from the people of the United Kingdom that actually helped pay for their wedding. Everybody was very excited to see them get married and everyone wished them well. Let's look at a clip or two here from their wedding. And what struck me about this was the fact that um, the Queen originally gave Meghan an opportunity to not receive any titles and to continue going on with her acting and her, uh, if she wanted to have her TIG website, whatever she wanted to do, but without having to be considered a working royal. She refused that and said that she wanted to give up everything. It was her choice to do so and she wanted to be a working royal. So in doing that, uh, how did, in two short years did she forget the vows that she took to honor and serve Harry, uh, to be a good wife, to do all the things that she promised him that she wanted to do. Remember, she wasn't forced into these things. These were her choices. So in such a short time, how did it go from her not wanting to, her wanting to be in the royal family to not wanting to be with them at all and, and uh, having to escape for her freedom? Let's look at another clip here. I think about the videos. Just a moment. I share with you. I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all that I have. All that I have. I share with you. I share with you. Within the love of God. Within the love of God. Father, Son, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. 
So how did we go from this to where she received a wedding fit for a princess and the UK paid out all of this money and the royal family to give her everything that she wanted to it uh, to everybody being against her. From the, I remember when they got married um, or when they were dating, she said she didn't know anything about the royal family. The people in uh, the United States really didn't follow him, uh, follow them and, and know what they were all about. And then we saw pictures of her bedroom as a child and every bit of the wall space was plastered with uh, pictures of uh, Diana, the royal family, the children, Everything that she wanted, she had books that she had read about them. She had obsessed with them. We saw the videos of the birthday party to where she was playing a princess and playing a queen. And all of her friends were her um, royal servants and how they had to um, address her as her majesty. So those are might be little white lies, but they're lies in the fact that she told people she didn't know anything about them. And Harry even said in the interview, in their engagement interview, that he's done everything he can to prepare her, to tell her what it would be like, and to give her a choice so that she knew exactly what she was getting into. And then she leaves and said she didn't know what it was about. She didn't know what she was getting into, and everybody was out to get her. So if we go from this fairy tale wedding to where we are today, and Megan's running from everybody. And Megan has attacked so many people in the family. There's her mom, Doria. We saw little Charlotte a moment ago. And how she's attacked poor Kate. And you can hear the song in the background, This Little Light of Mine. So after they're married and they're walking out, she's having a song played or sang that is This Little Light of Mine saying that she is going to be, that was the clue right there for all of us, that she was going to be in the spotlight and that uh, she was going to shine from now on. Forget the fact that she was working for Her Majesty the Queen and a working member of the family, but no, she was going to let her light shine. She was going to be in the spotlight, and this is all that she had imagined, that it was all going to be about her now. So let's move on. So what? We, what's the latest report? We hear that uh, Megan and Harry are reporting to the LAPD about drones flying over their uh, their property that where they're staying at Tyler Perry's house and how they're twenty feet above the property to get photos. But what I don't understand is if these drones were taking photos of them and invading their privacy, why haven't we seen any of these photos? Why haven't we seen them in the magazines? Why haven't they shown up? And I believe the picture that was taken of Harry when he was playing with the dogs, tossing the ball to him, I believe that was Megan that was taking those photos. And she was the one that probably sent that to her PR team and had that released out so that she could cry again, saying how they were being hounded and harassed by the paparazzi. I saw this on, uh, I, believe, was this, I think on Tumblr, Little Lily Ladybug. Same old, same old. One question, if the and this she even asked, if the paparazzi taken pictures with the drones, why haven't any of the pictures been printed or posted anywhere in the media? Curious, right? Do Sunshine Sacks think we're all really that stupid? End this hypocrisy now. The Daily Mail reports, Kate, Megan, and the snobbish claims that have been sparked by Palace Fury as Tadler Magazine exposes the truth about their simmering rivalry. Richard K. reveals what has really ignited a backlash. They have not always been without the critics, but the way that they and their three char char excuse me, charming children have led the royal family's response to the pandemic with such warmth and enthusiasm has made their hold on public affection as secure as it has ever been. 
the pictures of George, Charlotte, Louis clapping for the NHS with their parents outside the front door on the Norfolk home will surely remain one of our most engaging memories of this crisis. Meanwhile, the imaginative way Kate and William have used technology to connect with people all around the country, especially their stint on online bingo callers, has been both touching and impressive. And that was so cute whenever they were doing that. And the people at the retirement community, uh, when the lady won the bingo, she had done, (coughs) excuse me, (coughs) pardon me, Prince William asked how he did. And she said, well, you did well. But then she was talking about somebody else that uh, calls it out better. Sorry, I have hay fever. And lately it has really been getting to me. Especially this time of the day. And I was outside earlier. But suddenly there is the uneasy focus of a snobbish profile in Society Magazine Tattler. This was so nasty. They put uh, Catherine the Great and they put her on the cover of uh, Tattler Magazine. But when they did, then they talk all these ugly things about her. It even manages to impugn William until now untouchable relationship with Princess Diana with a bizarre suggestion that Carol Middleton, who is mocked as a social climber, was the mummy that he always wanted. Now, this is so terrible what these uh, people are printing. And like Megan's um, friend or source release that... um, David Foster was the new father that uh, Harry had never had. Now they're saying that Kate Middleton is the mommy that um, that Prince William always wanted. He loves his mother. Nobody's replacing his mother, and nobody could ever do that. But he is very close to um, Catherine's mom, and I think that's wonderful. He has that uh, good bond. He enjoys her family because it's a normal family, and he gets to have those um, wonderful family relationships, unlike Harry where Megan has pulled him away from all of his friends and family, and she has no family to speak of that she talks to except her mother. Now, she was it was said that she wanted to go back to California so that she could be close to her mom. Well, is that true, or did she want to start her acting career? I believe she wanted to, um, to be a Hollywood actress again, but I believe her reputation is so damaged now and that uh, she's so such a controversial figure that nobody wants to have anything to do with her. Even during this pandemic, I think she's worked extremely hard, and we know that she's had friends like George Clooney and, and other people that um, are A-list actors that have tried to reach out and uh, secure parts for and I'm sure she's been helped by Oprah and even Tyler Perry, who owns his own studio. But she wants to have an A-list part when she was never an A-list actress. So Kensington... Kensington Palace took the highly unusual step of publicly and formally distancing itself from the claims in the article. In a statement, it said, The story contains a swath of inaccuracies and false misrepresentations which were not put to Kensington Palace prior to publication. With such a strong denunciation was partly to prevent some of the more fanciful allegations being repeated, but it is also underlined the palace dismay of what it is printed. So what was it about the article that has upset them so much? Many will doubtless pivot toward Tightsgate. I didn't know uh, exactly what had occurred. I'd heard on um, on other articles that on whenever Charlotte was going for her fitting for the dress that she's wearing there in the picture, that uh, Megan had uh, said something that upset Kate and that it was about her daughter, Charlotte. Well, come to find out, it all has to do with the tights that they're wearing. Kate was just trying to be a um, helpful and has tried to show Megan the ropes and explain to her, you know, what's protocol and, and what they need to do and not need to do. But Megan doesn't want to hear any of it. Megan didn't want them to wear tights. And I think it's funny here, little Charlotte scratching her leg. She has no tights on and they don't even have the cute little short socks. So it just says this relates to the outfits the bridesmaids were to wear at Meghan and Harry's wedding two years ago. The magazine profile entitled Catherine the Great quotes an unnamed friend of the Cambridges who claimed Kate wanted to follow protocol with the bridesmaids who included Princess Charlotte, then age three, wearing tights. 
There was an incident at the wedding rehearsal, the source says. It was a hot day, and apparently there was a row over whether the bridesmaids should wear tights or not. So Kate, following protocol, felt that they should. Megan didn't want them to. Photographs from the ceremony of St. George's Chapel, Windsor, suggest Megan won the argument because they appear to show the six bridesmaids with bare legs. And that is unusual, just wearing little dress shoes and no socks and no tights. It is worth noting the pictures from Prince William and Kate's wedding in 2011 show their bridesmaids wearing tights because she was trying to uh, let her know that this is what the queen likes. This is what you should do. It's not a big deal, but even then, Meghan wasn't going to listen to anybody else. Such petty domestic disputes disrupt many a royal, of course. As for the tights, well, that is a royal way. Had Kate intervened, as the article suggests, say, friends, it would have not been just because she knew the tights looked neater, but also as a mark of respect to uh, the queen. Certainly, there have been previous reports of disagreements between the two duchesses over wedding day outfits. One with claim that Kate, who had not long given birth to Prince Louis, had been reduced to tears after an encounter with Meghan. Middleton family friends also have always denied the tears story, but have also acknowledged that the relationship between the two women have not been easy. All of the same, they do not recognize Tadler's assertion that the Duchess of Cambridge has sought the opportunity to put Meghan in her place, reprimanding her for speaking impersonally to Kensington Palace staff. We all know that it was said that Meghan spoke very ugly to staff. She talked down to them. Um, she was very demanding, and everything had to be done her way, and she was pretty much a perfectionist. What is undeniable is that the arrival of Meghan upset the dynamics of the close relationship that existed between William and Kate. And here's a picture of uh, Tattler Magazine and beautiful Catherine on there. So I'm going to stop right there and let's go back. And then I've got, I'm going to leave everything else for the next video. And uh, I appreciate you for tuning in. This is uh, my channel. Thank you for uh, all of my viewers and thank you for my subscribers. I appreciate you guys very much. Have a good day and I'll have another video soon.